Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show, episode 33. Yeah, That's welcome. Right. Welcome. How are you doing, Ben? I'm doing just fine, Ari. How are you? How's the weather there in, San, or in the Bay Area? Excuse me. The weather? I can't tell because last I looked, it was very gray outside. Mm. I didn't see the sun, but maybe it's coming out soon. Yes, uh, it's very sunny, blue skies over here. I have my I Heart Clouds shirt on, so it's the summertime nice. outfit. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Feeling good. So we have people that joined us. Annika, thanks for moderating today. Indeed. We have Sean, Jean, Ryan. Welcome, everyone, and tell us where you're from. Say hello. Indeed. And we'll say hi back. Speaking of which, where are we from? Huh. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I should introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Ari. I'm the library manager for Adobe Fonts. And my team works with all the Foundry partners that design the fonts that are included in your Creative Cloud subscription. We currently have over 150 partners and we consistently add fonts to expand our library. And I'm located in the Bay Area of California. Nice. I am Ben. I am previously was located in California, Southern California, but now I'm in Brooklyn, New York. I'm a content producer for Adobe Fonts. So basically, I do things to educate and create material for people to learn and get the most out of Adobe Fonts when they're using Creative Cloud. And then if you're new to Adobe Fonts, um, it is a very large library of fonts, 20,000 plus fonts that you can use for both commercial and personal use. And uh, if you've never used it before, I highly recommend you check out our recommendations feature. Wow, look at that. Um, so that would be a great place to start uh, on our website. So adobefonts.com slash recommendations, check that out. Sorry, fonts.adobe.com slash recommendations. Ooh, yeah. Yes. I see that we have um, Barbara from Music City, USA. Yes. Nashville, <laughs> represent. <laughs> and we have Enlightened Swami from Nepal. Fantastic. That's cool. Very Welcome. Cool. Well, we have a, uh, a, a poll or quest, more of a question, but kind of a poll um for today's topic to help us out here so the question is what should we call our ice cream brand we're going to do a little logo design and exploration here on the stream and we have a few options here that you can choose from um you know you don't have to pick any one of those although i think you know which one you should pick but if uh you can also make up your own if you have any funny ice cream uh brand names uh that you think you, you could add maybe we'll use that one so let us know um yeah we want your feedback yeah and i'll leave this on the screen for a little bit and if any of you are on youtube watching us please head over to behance.net slash live that way you can participate in the chat and we can see your questions or your feedback indeed Hi, Kyle. Hi, Robert. Welcome. What do you all think? Yeah, what do you think? Ben thought of all of these names. Oh, Annika has a little poll Whoa. link. Nice. That's cool. Maybe I should vote. Yeah, let's go vote. Done. Mine is in German, I think. Huh. I wonder why. Site. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still able to navigate the UI? Yeah. Good. Good. So we were thinking for today, for everyone, we're going to look at a Behance mood board that I've already created and get inspiration from that, look at 
what people have done with ice cream packaging and logos specifically. So that's why we need a name for our resulting project that we'll work on. It is looking like Ben and Ari's is the uh, is the number one so far. But uh, we've got a vote for Moo House and Bad Humor, which I'm happy about because I was I was proud of those as well. So, <laughs> yeah, Ben was saying Moo House. We could use Bauhaus font. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Shall we dive right in? Get started. All right. Yeah. Cool. Looks like. We Let's know our name, Ben and Ari's. Um, okay, so I just wanted to show you all something new that's on the Adobe Fonts website. So this is our homepage, as may, many of you have seen. Um, but the new thing, when you scroll down, you can see the express templates that use fonts. And you can scroll through and actually look at the specific fonts that are used in each template, which is a really cool feature. So if I hover on one of these family names here, it'll put a little bounding box around where that font exists in the template. Super useful. Yes. And then if I click on view more here, I get to this page where I can just look through all of these images of inspiration. I can open them directly in Adobe Express. And I can also, again, look at where those fonts are. If I'm looking at this and I think, oh, I really like the font at the top um, where it says Virgo, I'll hover over both and see, oh, that's Abril Fatface. And then I can go to Abril Fatface, the family page. And even there, we'll have a list of templates that use this specific family. Yeah. So I'll show you that in a second if I scroll down here. But great way to find There's a lot of yeah. fonts in it. So. Great way to find fonts see. just visually so because lovely. you can you can open it up in in uh, Express and try it right away. So Yeah. Really so any of these um if you hover over the image itself it says open and express. And then if you hover over the font names, it shows you where the fonts are. And then if you're in this um, font detail family page, page yeah. you scroll down and then it'll show you these are express templates that use this font specifically. And you can look through, which is a really cool. And then you can just go straight into express again and edit it. So I think it acts as inspiration, but also it could actually become your project. Like you end up here because you want to use this font and then you see a template that happens to be very close to the project that you want to create. And it's very quick. And all you have to do is go into Express and customize it. So um, let us know through our user voice channel if you have any feedback about this and if you're using it, or even in the chat today, if you have any questions about it. Um, just wanted to show that to you all. And we can move into Behance to show our mood board. So this is my mood board that I created which has inspiration for ice cream logos, ice cream brands. Mm -hmm. And I did not specifically try to make it all pink and purple. <laughs> <laughs> this is just how, what happened because most of these brands have these colors, but it's such a fun page when you look at all of these together. So, um, if any of you have not created a mood board before on Behance, it's really easy. If you're on Behance and you see something you like, you can just click on it and then save. And then you can create a new mood board or add it to an existing mood board. And that's a great way to collect 
inspiration yeah. or things you want to refer back to. If you're ever like stuck on a project and you're not sure what to do, but you want to do something kind of productive, this is a good thing. It's just like gather up materials, stuff that you know will might inspire you in the future. And honestly, mm -hmm. you might in the process of that just see something that jogs a new idea and gets you unstuck. And you might not, but either way, it's valuable because you'll use it in the future. So, yeah. So I got a lot of uh, material from this mood board. Some of them, I feel like we could group the brands into fun versus fancy. And it really shows by the kind of typography they use and the colors. Um, this one would definitely be a fun brand. And then something like this is a little bit fancier, using more minimal design, using different kinds of fonts. So I figured we could go through and find some attributes for what we want to do. So everyone in the chat, should we do something fun or fancy for our Ben and Ari's ice cream? Ice cream brand. And you'll notice that almost all the fancy ones are gelato. Just saying. Yeah. That is just... So this one looks fancy. Let's see. Yeah. Also gelato. Also gelato. <laughs> Anything with serif font is gelato. <laughs> Let's see what else. I would say this one is like between. This one looks fancy. Um, Elizabeth was asking about Adobe fonts and um, basically said, have you ever made your own fonts? So Adobe fonts doesn't make fonts, although we have Adobe type, which is a, which is a type foundry that's part of our team um, here that that produces some of the best fonts in the world. So there's definitely, yeah, we, our team does make type and does make fonts, but Adobe fonts mm -hmm. is basically a, a library of fonts that you can use in creative cloud up to 20,000 plus fonts. So, so to get started, you just go to fonts.adobe.com and poke around and you'll find cool fonts that you could maybe use. And yeah. Yeah. Um, and Annika makes a good point. We do have a way to upload fonts to the CC desktop app to use within mm -hmm. your CC product. Yep. So if there's a font that either you created or you need for your company brand that's not in our library, you can upload that yep. as well. Okay, so someone said fun and, oh yeah, Mike says fun and fancy. We need to do one or the other. I need to plug in my computer. Just give me one moment. Oh. Everyone's saying it's giving them anxiety. Um, I agree. Oh, yes. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I got unplugged. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Whoops. We're fine. We're back. I'm not going to. We are back. Disappear. So I was thinking we could jot down what the different attributes are of each type of brand, like the fancy ones versus the fun ones. So um, we can choose which fonts we're going to use for ours, for our logo and for our packaging. Yeah. Um, in this case, they're kind of straddling the fancy and fun, but it's pretty fun. I think it's, yeah. And you'll notice it's like pretty fun. fat letters or rounded bulbous letters a lot for ice for the fun stuff you know? yes and i have this very boring illustrator <laughs> document that i was kind of i was just gonna write a list like for fun we have it looks like a lot of pastel colors rounded fonts and you were saying like heavy. Yeah, like heavy kind of fat looking fonts sometimes or like heavy, fat, bulbous, fonts. you know, or like almost I think probably what they're bulbous. trying, what they're going for is like, like a drop, you know, like a drop of water where it's round like that or a drop of, of ice cream, the melting ice cream. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Let me see what else. I saw another one that 
was fun. This one, this is very bold. This yes. and rounded. <laughs> Absolutely. Moody's. Get it? <laughs> and I like that they're not all pastel colors. They're kind of mixing up the colors. Yeah. And it's actually and it's, it's very minimal. It's refreshing that there's no picture on there. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes you a little more. Hmm. I'd have to read the label. Yeah. Let's see what other attributes there are. There's some whimsical illustration yep. shapes. And you see also scripts for this kind of thing. You know, you'll see a mm -hmm. like a like a bolder logo and then like a script font for like what the flavor is or something. Yeah. Kind of handwritten. Michelle said that pastel colors could also work for a fancy design. And I think that is true. Actually, I think combining some of those things can make for a really interesting design because generally what we're seeing is, you know, pastel colors and kind of bright colors and then really bulbous fonts. But maybe if you had really fancy fonts and then pastel colors or vice versa, maybe you used mm -hmm. a really clean colors, but used really fun fonts. Like this is kind of like that. That, yeah. that Cali logo is kind of big and bold and looks kind of cool and fun, but very simple, minimal design. Yeah, it elevates it a little bit. And these are all pastel, but very fancy looking. Oh, yeah, totally. But you can see in this case, the fonts they used are, so they use a serif for their company logo and then for the flavors, they use a very high contrast. Sans serif. Thin. I don't know if you can say this is a sans serif. I see serifs. That's true. I see the T. Hey, good call. On the T. Good call. Um, it's just kind of decorative, though. It's not really. I was looking at the Coco, which didn't have any serifs because it was just CO. And I was like, oh, it's a sans. Oh, yeah. They chose where to put their serifs selectively. Should I put selective serifs? Put put high contrast. <laughs> yeah. And selective. I like selective serifs too. <laughs> um, and lighter, thinner. People um, like that Cali design a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, we do have that typeface in our library for Cali. I believe it is um, beastly. Let's see. You know what we could do just to make sure and we could show one other feature that we have is do visual search. So I'll take a little screenshot for visual search. Ding. And then I'll just drag that into our website. Simple as that. You just drag any image with type on it into our website. And then it will load. It will try to recognize what letters are in the image. It didn't really, but it doesn't matter because it's still recognizing the attributes. I think the half um dot kind of mess it up okay so let's see if it finds it these are all pretty close they are but we actually have this one <laughs> i think it's this dot that's I, like i think so too tripping it out um but yes if you were looking for an alternative all of these are pretty good alternatives you're achieving the same kind of look um, but this one has um, a lot of very specific attributes, like the way the K kicks out that you would want to emulate. So I'm going to Ono type code because I know that this is reminding me of some of the fonts from this foundry. 
and I don't remember the name of it. So what I can do is just go like this. Okay, we're seeing that K kick out here, but this is it, Beastly. That's the right. one. So Beastly is the one. Um, there's a bunch of different weights in this family and they're based on optical size. So like if you are setting text at a smaller size, you might want to use the 12 point because it doesn't have as like um, refined thin lines. And, and then it goes from there. And the sizes are right in the name. So, helpful. yes, it's very easy. I'm actually going to activate these because I want to. I was thinking we can try using them in our design. Okay. So, that was just taking what we saw from our mood board and getting the exact match on Adobe fonts. And then, whoops, I left my mood board. Black. And then what else? We have a very classic rounded font. I scrolled too far. Classic rounded font here in this one. Very friendly, fun, pastel. It has those whimsical illustrations, like we said. Yep. Um, I like this as a kind of simple. I would say it's more childish, not as refined or trendy. Yeah. So it's funny because yeah, consider. you can do whimsy and then you can do kind of childlike whimsy or you can do a more kind of adult or refined whimsical thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's subtle, obviously. I just said whimsy like 18 times, but but you know, you I think everyone knows what I mean. <laughs> All the whimsies. This one I think is very cool. It has that Art Deco yeah. vibe. A hundred percent. And then it has the script which is a little more modern i would even say though that still. that combination is very art deco that kind of yeah yeah the script uh, the script sub sub font with the large san like characterful sans serif is a very wow so this is a real thing this is cool yeah it looks great very refined but still fun yeah like if I saw that on a beach, I'd be like, you would go. G yeah. Give me some of that. Is there any ice cream place on a beach that you wouldn't try? You know, um, that is an excellent question. I'm going to go with <laughs> no, uh, or I'll know it when I see it because the default answer is yes to all the ice cream <laughs> on the beach. This one is cool. So it looks like they use brandon grotesque yep for the amor part and then they did a custom eo that's kind of scripty yeah cute yeah and then they used a reverse contrast sans underneath sorry i'm going to keep zooming in um but just for those of you that don't know that terminology reverse contrast means that the thick parts and the thin parts of the letters are reversed. So usually the sides of the O are thicker and the top and bottom is thinner. In this case, that's the opposite. So it is a little more playful and modern looking when, when you use a subtle reverse contrast. Once you get to the more extreme reverse contrast, it goes into like wood type Western territory. Mm. Um, but that's cool. They use that. I like this logo. I like it too. Really I good think... combo of like modern. It looks refined, but it looks fun and approachable. It's good. Yeah. I yeah. think you could, has a lot of potential. So, oh, and look at this. This is using Blenny by Dalton Mog. Which is also in so our I library. I want to get that. I don't want to forget to activate these fonts so that I can try them out. So Blenny, activate that. And it's being used for this. I keep clicking the wrong thing. It's being used for this Yogo. 
thing. I like that they turned the Y upside down to make it look like a, an ice cream. Clever. Yeah. You know what's weird for me is if you reflected that, it would be a Greek lambda. Mm. And all I can see is a lambda in the upside down Y. Yeah. Even though it's reflected. <laughs> but it's a cool concept that they used that. And then you can use that upside down Y as its own mark to for your packaging and here like they did on the booth that's cool so in this case it's again a very bold fat kind of font roundy kind of, a lot of curves rounded, yeah. curvy so i think we can take that into account um, and this one is really cool doesn't fit the mold it's really fun but it's using something that's not rounded at all not bulbous but very um how would you call like, it like asymmetrical and like yeah you know off kilter and then it does have the whimsical little illustrations though yes that kind whimsical of that illustrations so and fun color, sure. fun bright colors but but use sparingly i like that most of it's white and then they have these bursts of color i think it looks really good yeah okay i think we have enough information from our mood board to go in and start so i'm gonna go back to illustrator now real quick ari with the list that we have on mm -hmm. the left the rounded fonts heavy bulbous if you didn't know the names of the fonts, obviously you, you're pretty familiar with our library. Um, if you didn't know the names, where would you go to find stuff like that on our site? Great question. So once I have this list and I know I want the fonts to be rounded, bold, heavy, etc., and some handwritten, I'm going to go to our website. Sorry, I lost my mouse. Okay, here it is. And I'm on the homepage right now. If I want to go browsing and looking for different fonts, I'm going to go to all fonts. And then I can use the filters that are shown here to filter down and find what I need. So one of the attributes that we found was rounded. So we actually do have a rounded tag. And I'll click here so you can see all the tags that we have. Rounded, I'm going to click on that. And then I'm also going to go down to the weight filter. Since we said we want fat heavy yep. for the fun brand, I'll click on the heaviest weight. And that shows me fonts, uh, font families that include a very heavy weight. Then I can browse through these. Another thing I can do is to put the text that I want to set in. So we know that our brand, I don't know why that's not working. Our brand, we want it to be Ben and Ari's. Then I'm going to do list view here on the left so that I can see everything in list view. The two top ones here, we're not seeing really whimsical. They're a little more square rounded. Here, Karak, this looks great. I'm going to open that in new tab so we can see it later. Um, Sophia, this is, I would say, looking good. I'm not getting a very fun vibe from it. It's a little too geometric, I think, for what we want to do. Mm -hmm. but. It has a good However, part. these two look really good. You know, you can notice in the Hoth round, it's got a little bit of reverse contrast, very slight, but you can see that the top and bottom of the ampersand are heavy. It's giving it a little playful look. Opening that in new tab, opening that in new tab. Decoy, love this. Ben loves it because he likes those kind of vintage looking things. 
The vintage, the, the rounded tell. vintage serifs are my faves. Yes, I know he'll like it. My heart, um, so my heart, that gives us a few options. My heart just skipped a beat when you when you opened up decoy. <laughs> it was it was so happy. Oh, Cooper Black, a classic. Ben loves that. Okay, so that's giving us a lot of options. Oh, look at this one, Freud. That's so cute. Very cute. I already have that active, so that's great. And then that's giving us a lot of options. And then what if we wanted a different filter? Yeah. Like. So like some of the, yeah, what are some of the ones we could fun. use? Fun, funky, right? Here are the fun fonts, hobo, always a great choice. A classic. For fun. Um, funky. And again, with something like funky, you're probably going to get a lot of stuff that doesn't work, but you might just stumble upon something that is exactly what you're looking for. So yeah. worth worth perusing for a little bit to see if it's the right thing. I feel like this Glodok family would be one of those that straddles the fun yes. to fancy, like if, that Cali brand. If we were a gelato we totally brand, we would use this. Yes, yeah. gelato, but not too not, fancy. Yeah. And then what else? We have friendly. So this would be, again, Maybe like the top one, Monarca, Gelato, not too fancy. So there's a lot of options using those filters. And I still have the heavy weight applied, um, but there's a lot of other, you know, we talked about well, if we wanted something fancy, high contrast. That's a filter that exists here. So I could do high contrast, thin weight, um, take off the friendly thing, add serif. So it's like cooking with a lot of different ingredients, yeah. just one after the other, see what works here. That's perfect for like artisan gelato. We're seeing exactly the kind of fonts that we would want. More contrast, serifs, yeah. Looking, yeah. looking elegant. Very elegant. So that's just to show you if you didn't know what names of fonts you want specifically and you just saw some attributes in your Behance mood board or when you're browsing or seeing fonts in the wild, you can go onto our website and use those filters. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at what we thought was cool. So this family is really cool because it kind of gets progressively melty as the weight gets heavier. <laughs> that is great. cool. It actually says melted. And although we don't want to be selling melted ice cream, I think something like the bold melted would be cool to use. A medium melted. Let's activate those. Haas. This has that reverse contrast, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the bold, bold italic. Let's try heavy. Ah, oh, ultra. We need to try that. Okay. Marigny. This one's cool. I'm going to go all the way to the black. Decoy all the way down just for good measure we got to do decoy <laughs> and then we already have blenny and we already have um beastly so we have a good selection i'm gonna go back to my illustrator file the other thing that we want if we're gonna do something fun is pastel colors and maybe some whimsical illustration so I already did some stuff because I know that I'm not going to have too much time here. So one of the things I did was come up with some color palettes based on the colors that I saw in some of the existing brands that we looked at on Behance. I used, I kind of took a screenshot and used my eyedropper tool and picked some colors that I really liked. And I kept two a relatively pastel theme 
but not all pinks and purples, lavenders so. and yeah yeah and i thought of these flavors that could map onto the color so we can start with that i also came up with this logo of this icon of the ice cream cone very simple but then i was thinking it could also become a pattern um, that could be used maybe across the top of the ice cream cups or top of a sign or something and i was looking at the different orientations that this could be in because i was thinking I didn't know. What if it looks good sideways? What if it looks good upside down? At first, I thought maybe it could be an exclamation mark, but I don't know if that really works. What if it's outlined? So that's just something I came up with. And then I was looking at fonts prior to this exploration. I just looked at what was in my font menu. But I think we can do a little list here with what we've activated. I want to replace this one. It's not really the vibe we're going one. for yeah so um let's see what's the best way to do this i mean we could just check decoy see how it looks you know <laughs> just saying you're like i want decoy okay. decoy oh i already love good. it i know i knew you would Okay, discourse I already had, and I thought that was kind of cool. It's not fitting with the rounded as much. It's kind of playful. Ooh. Um, you know what it did remind, it, remind me of? The actual Ben and Jerry's logo. Yeah, maybe so I thought it was kind of Maybe cool. try Blenny also, because I think they share some of those. The, yeah. They share some similar attributes. So... Oh God, my system has run out of memory. Let's hope that doesn't affect us. Okay, so I'm going to make a bunch of those. This one is called Jumble, just FYI. I already had that. Um, love, love the ampersand on that one. Yeah, that's a good one. So we said Blenny. Woo. Look at that ampersand. Love it. Gotta love it. And then we also had Beastly. So, oh, we have so many choices. I think I'm gonna do the 16. And then we can group them by like rounded versus. Kind of chunky serif. Yeah, Hoss round. I'm going to do the heavy for now. Karak. Melted. Melted. And okay. you notice too, like, so all of these kind of fit the description to some degree, but yeah. they're so different, like they really give you different vibes. Um, you know, you can, you can kind of imagine what the brand is going to go for based on which which of these we choose you know um yeah does anyone have a preference in the chat of which ones they like let me know i really like beastly i really like blenny and i really like discourse of course or decoy and i oh so you're into I'm, You're not into the rounded ones as much. I meant decoy, but I really like the melted one. That one looks really fun. This one? Yeah. And even the one, what's the second one down from the top? Yeah. Jumble. Jumble. I like that one too. So no, I like I like stuff from both sides. <laughs> Wait, is this the same? Oh yeah, these are the same. I was looking at it like, I think that's the same thing. Um there's also the option of, so I know you love Estet Nova. Yes, I do. And I have that, but I only have it in my current menu in a thin weight. I can find heavier weights 
of that one to see if there's something we like. I'm just going to my find more. So in your fonts menu in Illustrator, you have your fonts tab, and then you have the find more tab, which takes you to the Adobe fonts full library and you can choose whatever you want. You can we are get we, we got a vote for Blenny. A vote for the third on the left. And then oh, okay. And then a vote for Beastly. A vote for Blenny, a vote for Haas, and a vote for Beastly. So far. All right. So we're all over the map right now. We need some tiebreakers here, everybody. Let's keep them coming. <laughs> the Find More tab is taking too long. It's probably because my computer ran out of memory. <laughs> okay, now it's working. That'll do it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to, let me just, Why is this happening to me? I want to change this. To let's see, serifs. So I'm here using some of these filters that we have on our website um, Ooh. that are also here. So I, I have a set Nova that I found. I think it doesn't have anything. So much. I have a set Nova that I have on my computer. Um, and it's also showing me the other weight of it so i could change to this black one i just have to click on this activate button i do like how ass that nova looks here but i think of the two this one or decoy i think i prefer decoy in this case with mm. the, which has a similar vibe yeah um it's just a little bit fatter a little bit roundier roundier a little bit meltier Yes. Well, we can try a couple different options. Yeah. So for the logo, I was thinking that we could incorporate something like the text over this ice cream cone. Um, I can change the font here since we want to do one of the other ones. So let's try decoy. Clear all, not the, not the italic. And since decoy is a little bit wider than what we had before, we just have to kind of adjust. Yeah. Um, and what I did here was I just created this shape and then I used type on a path for this. And I clicked on that oval and this little icon and I did a line horizontal align. So that was pretty easy. Um, one thing that I just wanted to point out is that a lot of times it's easy to, for example, take, let's try using Beastly for this. A lot of times it's so much easier to just take this and warp it and say, okay, I want this to be like arching over here. All I'm going to do is do that. Um, and this is good for just maybe mocking something up. But the problem with the warping is that it actually stretches out the letters mm. and you're not going to get the same. It's not going to look like the same font as it was. So I would say, type on path. let me just show you like what type on path looks like when I change it to beastly. 
and you'll see how much wider it got when it was warped. Mm. See the warped one on the bottom? It's stretched out, I can tell. Yeah, and you can see once you like bend it more that it stretches it out even more. So just showing you that because some of you may not have thought about the implications of warping and how it, it stretches. And the type designer took a lot of time to design all of the characters that are in the font. So they know what proportions they want. And usually it's not great to stretch it out. Sometimes it works for your design, but if it's unintentional, then it's not good. Yeah. So just be aware if that's of that's the that. effect you're going for. Awesome, no problem, but just make sure that that's, yeah. that's what you want. Um, Elizabeth asked, what if the bottom of the ampersand was part of an ice cream topping? And I think that was when we were oh. looking at the more rounded font up there. Um, oh, like one of these. Yeah, you had, I think, ampersand. I think you had jumble was in there before. And it looks kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that kind of made me thought that if just with just the icon, you could kind uh -huh. of take that idea and make the top of the ice cream cone into an ampersand, like a swirly. That's true. Ice cream ampersand. So let's say we copy this, and then we're gonna do it using a different font. Let's just put this ice cream here. Okay, so we're going to take this. And let's say we do this with jumble. Um, I hate, I hate this. this is why it's easier to warp things. <laughs> So let's say I ungroup this and maybe it won't quite work if it's all on one thing. Yeah, my thought. Maybe I should try just doing the Amberson by itself. Yeah, see if it, I think what, I, what I'm thinking is that this is a promising idea. We probably won't see it fully fleshed out here, but it's definitely a promising thought. I think. This all needs to be in good. That is the promising thought. Like that kind of looks like, yeah. And then it uses the and from our logo to stand on its own, yeah. which is really great. That looks really good. Good idea. That looks, that turned out super cute. So you could figure out a way. Oh, why did that come back? I'll put you over there. Stay over there. Okay. So I'm going to group this. I'm going to increase it. And then I'm wondering if, Sorry about my artboard etiquette, everybody. It's very chaotic. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can do something where people are digging this direction. <laughs> Oh, good. Elizabeth's happy okay, with it. So I'm going to increase uh, this. Yeah. What if we do something where we're using this in a way? I'm going to ungroup this again because this is a little too close to the ampersand. Nice. Let's see. What if? So jumble is kind of bouncy. What if I used, I keep saying what if, and then I do it. Let's say I use the touch type tool and 
see if we can. Oh yeah. Do something like make it a little more playful, even. Let me know what feedback we're getting. Happy to take into consideration any feedback because already this is looking like much more exciting than what I had. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm loving the bouncy kind of vibe. Yeah. The touch type tool is fun because then the great thing is you've moved everything around, but it's still one text box. So you don't have to worry about creating all these different text boxes. One thing that I'm noticing is Ari's, like with the apostrophe S, is a longer word than Ben. So it's not like perfectly centered. Mm. So I'm wondering if there's a way to stack them or something yeah so let's two of these i'm gonna group this no <laughs> group and mike said you could make the ampersand a, like a top like a caramel topping on top of the ice cream and keep the circle now i'm liking how this is looking but i think oh i think that would totally be worth trying as well um Possibly, but I kind of like that it's that the ampersand has become the ice cream cone has become the the uh, scoop of ice cream. Yeah, we'll try that. We'll try that. So for now, I just wanted to see if I kind of rotate this somehow. Like, can I create more balance and since the two words are different lengths? Adam mentioned maybe we could make the Oops. the s kind of small. Like shrink it down a little bit and see if that with the touch type tool yeah kind of see if that helps oh a little more but i think making it off kilter a little bit worked too yeah but it's a little too off kilter <laughs> <laughs> i think it's missing i think making the s smaller was a good idea and maybe the only thing about the off kilter is it kind of looks like this ice cream cone fell on the ground <laughs> <laughs> it's like the classic thing that a kid cries about exactly let's try um a little bit of color so that we can see if we can make the ampersand into oh and just God, heads up Ari, we probably have about two more minutes what right yeah it happened so fast no that's not good i know okay so i'm going to quickly let's see pick up this caramel color mm, okay I don't have time to make any other decisions. Um, pick up. Everything is so big on my other artboards. Pick up this yellow and then this can become a pink. Let's just see what happens. I think this pink needs to be a little bit more pastel. Sun to back. And then this is like bigger and then this becomes smaller somehow. Ooh. This needs to be a lot less pink. Ooh. Something like this. I like it. And then it's like I feel like we could work with that. It kind of reminds me of the design I created uh, before all of this. Oh, show and show them the pattern. Yeah, the pattern turned out really cool too. Okay, so these are some of my mock-ups that I did. 
And then my final design was this. Nice. Yeah, that turned out great. When I was just riffing on the theme. And it is more balanced because everything is kind of like a lockup with the cone. I do like the idea of the ampersand being kind of a different element because in this case, it's all one with the letters yeah. and becoming like a topping. So we could totally explore that. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I came up with. I think it turned out great. And thank you everybody for the, su the suggestions. I think the uh, what we explored today turned out really awesome. So that was awesome. That was yeah. Great. Thanks, everyone. Follow us on Behance if you'd like to see more future shows. Uh, we post about every show that we do, and also all our past episodes are there at behance.net slash Adobe Fonts. Do check it out. And uh, yeah, we will uh, catch you next time. Thanks, Annika, for mo moderating, and thanks, everybody, for joining us in the chat. And Ari, good to see you again. And yeah, thanks for uh, putting yeah. that together for thanks, us. Thanks, Ben. Hope to see you all soon. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye.